Hello once again, Bob Dennis, Mark Tomerdahl. Welcome to Grumpy Science for another question and answer period. And this comes from Richard P., one of our, P is an abbreviation, uh, one of our, uh, our viewers. Viewers, and he, we answered one of his questions. When I say we, I mean Bob, because I don't answer It's a PEMF question. And so, so. this is a PEMF uh, do-it-yourself question, and Bob's going to... Bob's going to right. take it from here. So so thanks for your question again, Richard. And he had asked last time about some, some basic things. Well, he didn't just ask. He sent some schematics, some suggestions. He's, he's interested in um, – he's from – I think he lives in France. He speaks French and um, works in French. And it was, his English is fine, but he was also sending us some schematics and some ideas and some different stuff. And last time I talked a little bit about, last time we discussed PEMF, I talked a little bit about how, yeah, you know, a lot of those were things that I had actually tried when I first started building these things. So um, we have an ongoing discussion, and I'm going to give a more technical detail in an email response. But I, just, I wanted to talk about his, his high-level questions in this email. So he's, he said the only reason he, he'd like to build his own PEMF uh, device is so that he can program different protocols and 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 so he will know what it's doing. I wish more people were that way, right? Um, and so I'm really supportive of people who are DIY, sort of do-it-yourselfers, inventors, and stuff like that. Mark and I will be the first ones to tell you some of the stuff we do is really hard and takes decades, <laughs> right? On the other hand, there's a lot you can do with like an Arduino and and little microcontrollers and, and things like that that are cool. And I, you know. Sometimes I get on the DIY PEMF web pages and I give people, you know, I give people um, pointers like, you know, hey, I'll save you 10 years of frustration. Why don't you do it this way? And and so one of the things I'll do is I'll also try to remember, I'll put some links down to my patents, okay? And this is one of the things I want to talk about. I patent all of my PEMF stuff. And the reason I do it is so that I can protect it so that we can all continue to experiment with it, okay? So my patents are are strong and enforceable and if a bad person is pirating them i'm gonna come after you and i will win so don't even try but if you're a good person you're trying to help yourself a few other people move the field forward then my patents are there to protect you as well as me and everybody else so that we can actually operate in this field so this is all about me giving a thumbs up to diy pmf now richard asks a few questions that are kind of technical and specific and he wants to be able to vary the, the PEMF parameters, uh, like the frequency and, and basically all the parameters of PEMF. He wants to be able to do that. And let me just give you a you know, trivia question. I've actually posted the answer to this. If you were to vary the parameters, say 10 hertz and then versus 11 hertz versus 12 hertz, you know, over the full range of frequencies and the full range of amplitudes and the full range of pulse shapes, you know, sinusoidal and trapezoidal and triangular and square wave, and all that stuff. If you did all the possible combinations of that, how many, do you know the answer to this, Mark? How many different PEMF protocols would you have? Uh, infinite. Infinite's not a number, Mr. Scientist. You know no, that it's, it's okay. a number. Well, it's an actual it number. All. It's a big number. It's a very large <laughs> number. Okay, it is 1 times 10 to the 15th. It's a quadrillion. Okay, depends. I okay. He did, you know, somebody could sit there and argue with me, um, but but the answer is it's a really large number of possible ways that you can set up a PEMF. It's one times ten to the fifteenth, a quadrillion. So, how many different chemicals are there in the known universe? There's argument about this. <laughs> it's it's a couple hundred million, maybe. So, so at most, so, so there are more different PEMF vet, you know, parameters that you can, more protocols that you can put together by a factor of millions than there are known chemicals in the known universe and presumed chemicals in the unknown universe. If you add them all together, it's a tiny, tiny fraction of the different ways that you could apply electromagnetism with different protocols. So what that means is that you're not likely to go ahead and take a guess and get the right answer, <laughs> right? If, if, if you're on the head of a pin, like a lottery car, you know, a lottery ticket or something, it's got to be exactly right and something slightly wrong is going to be off. But it turns out that PEMF isn't, isn't on the head of a pin. And in fact, it's my scientific opinion, after having reviewed over a thousand papers on this in many different languages over the past 25 years, 20, 25 years, I don't really think that different protocols matter that much. It's sort of like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. 
Yeah, that does matter a little bit. What really matters is the shape of each pulse because I believe for low frequency, low intensity PEMF, and there's other types of PEMF that probably have some other mechanism like electromagnetism interacts with your body many different ways, right? Sunlight interacts with your retina, certain wavelengths that you can see. Different wavelengths interact with your skin, ultraviolet, <laughs> make vitamin D. Different wavelengths interact with your skin and your body and they radiate heat to you, okay? Other animals presumably can pick up other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Plants pick up a different part of the electromagnetic. So there's, a, so there's a. This is not. This is not like mystical stuff. I and mean, we know that biology interacts with the electromagnetic spectrum. It does so chemically and in a lot of different ways. There's quantum mechanisms involved in 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 photosynthesis and 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 so forth. So so we know these things are true. We, we know there's not, you know, it doesn't have to be mysterious. And, and it would be foolish, I think, to say we understand all of them. So I think PMF has a lot of different things that could be beneficial or harmful to the body. You got to be careful. And the low frequency, low intensity, by low frequency, I mean anything under like a thousand hertz, probably anything under a megahertz, but certainly anything under a thousand pulses per second, that's low frequency PEMF. And um, has anybody noticed how quiet Mark is? I'm enjoying this. <laughs> he's well, letting, trying to get he's letting me talk. I tried right. to ask a question a little while ago. I, I was when you're on a talk roll, over he gets all on the a time. roll, he won't I'm, let I'm me on a roll. Okay, I'm stopping now. Okay, ask so I'm going to ask the question I was going to ask a few minutes ago, which, oh, is, half an hour which is what frequency do you think dogs are picking up when they're sensing someone being scared? Pulsed electromagnetic field? No. What you said, you know, there, what frequency? We we're talking about frequency and different wavelengths uh, of well, light really, and different. Do you know, is there an answer to this, or are you just asking? I'm asking you if you know. You know, I don't know. That's I the thing. Know. I think you know, dogs are. If all, if if you know, transmitting information be, across different wavelengths. Like yeah, this. exactly. Well, I'm talking about electromagnetic <laughs> spectrum, and the interesting thing is, PMF doesn't necessarily fall on one point on the electromagnetic spectrum, right? Like, the color pink. There's no pink anywhere on the spectrum at one point, right? It's a combination of a, a few different colors, so you can't you can't find pink on the spectrum. You have to combine things, and so when you start doing that, you know you, you can actually start getting different waveforms and stuff. And so the key thing in PEMF, in my scientific opinion, and I could be wrong because I'm, I'm wrong all the time, but but I run experiments and I you know add to my knowledge and correct my mistakes hopefully but what i think is going on with pmf is the is the shape of each pulse that matters and so my recommendation to richard is is not so much to focus on being able to program all kinds of different pulse protocols because i don't, i'm not a real believer that there's a secret frequency here or a secret frequency there that you know i don't think there's a map between a specific frequency and a specific disease state or anything like that i think broadly speaking you know most pemf that's under 25 or 30 pulses per second down to you know one or two does a certain kind of a thing uh, when you're talking about including the brain there is brainwave entrainment that kind of complicates the issue a little bit but outside of the brain i think it's it's kind of just a few different things that happen with low frequency, low intensity PMF. And at least 85 or 90 percent of it is just the pulse shape and how quickly you turn the magnetic field on and how quickly you turn the magnetic field off. In calculus, we call that the first time derivative or the slope. And that is directly proportional to the induced electric field. That is Faraday's equation. It's fundamental to electromagnetism. It's not something I just made up. It was it's from the 18, you know, 60s, I think, around 1864. We've known it for a long time. Our entire world is built around it, cell phones and all the other stuff we use and, you know, power all, you know, from the grid, all these things are based on our knowledge of the basic relationship between electricity and magnetism. And I believe that from a biological transduction standpoint for a low frequency PEMF, what you really want to know about, what you really need to control is the shape of each pulse. Maybe there's an additional effect by changing the pulse parameters. And I do think that changing the frequency does have a benefit, but I think that's more to minimize your like tissue accommodation. So like by changing the frequency a little bit, it makes it less of a monotonic signal so your, your tissues don't ignore it, mm -hmm. right? And we know that even things that you can, you know, other types of electromagnetism, actually your body can't handle a straight signal there's a thing called retinal fade which you know about if you can stop your eyes from moving 
you lose your vision in about three or four seconds. Your retina, you know, your eyes have to be moving around in order for you to maintain your vision because the signal to each of the rods and cones kind of has to change over time. So the hypothesis that I have is that you've got to change the frequency. It kind of doesn't matter exactly what the frequency is. As long as you're changing it in this reasonable range of a few hertz, something in that range. Um, but you've got to have the right shape. So Richard, as you're making this device, and I'll give you some more technical details, the really the thing you're trying to do is um, tune the um, LCR, right? So LCR is just your induction capacitor, capacitance and resistance circuit, so that you're turning the magnetic field on at the right rate for the right amount of time. Why the right amount of time? Well, that's a biological thing. Any electrical stimulus has to be persistent for a certain amount of time for biology to respond to it. It's called chronaxy. So that's why electrical engineers fall down on this, is that, is that they're building a transformer, basically, an air core transformer. Richard understands this. But the other half of the transformer is something that's alive. It's not a coil of copper, right? And so how that living thing responds depends upon the 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 rate at which you change the magnetic field, which tells you the induced electric field. And it also depends upon how long you leave that induced field up because that's just simply a biological thing. Your biology will exclude. It will just not pay attention if the signal's not long enough. So that's my basic advice to DIY PMF people based on my experience. I could be wrong, but I think that focusing on special frequencies and special protocols is not going to get you there. What gets you there in PMF is understanding and measuring and controlling the shape of each pulse. And I'll give you, I'll reference my patents, it's all patented so that you know people can play with it and, and can't be excluded from it. Um, and I'll reference those down there. But anyway, uh, did you have anything else to say or ask, Mark? No, nothing nothing of any worth, apparently. So so. His behavior is excellent, <laughs> unlike mine. So um, I think that's it. If you have any other questions, technical or not, this is kind of technical and most people are like, yeah, you know, whatever. Um, not that interested in the electronics, but some people are really interested in why this PMF works. I give this as a scientific talk periodically, um, but I'm happy to have people understand it. And if you can improve on it, so much the better. But anyway, that's about it. All, All right. right. Thanks for joining us.